Kraft, we're going to get a little up close and personal here with him. <laughs> there you go. Tell me all your deep, dark secrets, Dr. Kraft. No. <laughs> so, now, when, I think one of, probably the, one of the biggest uh, historical landmarks in, the, in space exploration was the first landing on the moon, when you see the Armstrong taking off or another. Did, did you watch that, and did that have an impact on you, or is that just something that is just something that's happened? Well, actually, um, I watched it, but it didn't have an impact on me. At that time, I was in, in elementary school at that time. Uh, I went into the space program when I came to the military in Austria, and there was a department who was called Space Glacionautic, that's the one guys who go to ice. Nobody else has a glacionautic about <laughs> And flight. And we worked for fighter pilots and for one astronaut, the first and the last in Austria. And that's how I was involved in that. And then I was excited to work in this area. And we worked on, on machines against uh, loss of the muscles and bone density loss. And that's where we started. And I was involved in, in selecting the fighter pilots, which is similar to astronauts because they have to be fit and, and have to be mm -hmm. strong and so on. Astronauts who are coming back to Earth, different from the ones who are going to Mars. They don't need to be as fit. <laughs> and then Austria shut down the program, and the human space flight program. And so I thought, oh, where to go now? And I got the opportunity to go to this Japanese space agency. And when I went there, they said, no, nah, we don't want to hear anything about physiology. We have an isolation chamber. Can you do something with it? And I said, why don't we select our astronauts on that? And that was the period when the astronauts were selected. And during that time, we got also a chance with the Russian space agency, the European and the Canadian space agency, and where I met, met Dr. Kass. Uh, it was that the opportunity to go in an isolation myself, because the participant did not appear, and I was from the Japanese space agency as a, as a scientist to, to check out what happened in physiological and medical parameters, and I said, yes, I want to take that opportunity. And I have to say it was really important because if you experience yourself, it's a difference. All the researchers, I say, always sitting outside, thinking all this stuff what the people are doing inside, and when you're inside, it's different. Mm -hmm. So I went to a conference later on, just an example, and there was a scientist out there and blah, blah, blah about our experiment. And I said, this is all not true. I was inside. What are you talking about? <laughs> So that, that was one of the interesting things. And you have to experience and nobody can tell you you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So when I say I put them in isolation, I make these experiments, it has a meaning behind it. They cannot say I don't know what I'm talking about because I experienced it myself and this was just great. And now for you, being in that isolation project experiment there, what did you learn? Like what did you find that you were doing that you've seen maybe other people do and you realize, oh, I'm doing the same thing. Is there just something that happens in that thing that you find yourself, even though you may know ahead of time, People may react to this way in the situations you just couldn't help it. You were reacting that same way. Mm, the point what I realized is the key problem are the people. It's the interpersonal relationship. So if if one reporter asked me, "Oh, were you happy to leave it in the end of the time and light on the tunnel, end of the tunnel, or something?" and I said, "No, I could stay months more." But the personal interpersonal relationship. So I didn't have a problem with being isolated. That I I don't have going out in movie, cinema, whatever it is, they had no problems at all, and I was busy all the time, I was not bored, so that's what I saw, difference, people who are getting bored, becoming depressed, and they don't know what to do with the time, because mm. you get a program, but you shorten it down very quickly, you get really good in that things, and then you have a lot of free time, and if the boredom starts, and then you start thinking, oh, I am, I'm in a tin can, what I'm doing here, but if you're creative enough, then you really spend this time and you're excited about it. And that's what we did, others didn't do as well. And then interpersonal, intercultural problems appeared between the participants and so on. That was an additional point. And we saw it in the Mars 500, where a lot of them got bored and then depressed. That was reading about it, and that fits. So when I said, our applicants, if somebody's bored, you better don't go. And I asked one applicant, are you bored? He said, no, I can look at my shoelaces and I'm already excited. <laughs> so it, it's really, and the creative, idea is so important um, because it keeps your life in mass. You have to be creative. You cannot figure out all the things that happen. Mm -hmm. so they really have to be creative. And we measure it with the opposite of boredom. If he's not bored, then he really knows what he's doing with the things and he comes up with new things to do. Now, you're on Mars. I mean, I, there's only so much you can bring with you. So I'm thinking in terms of being creative, staving off boredom in that sort of environment. What are some options that it's not like you can bring like a, a whole room of board games with you or things like that? To like, hey, we can play this game or we can play that game. You've got to, there's only so much room you can bring stuff with you. So, what, what are ways that scientists or the people that are on Mars One help to stave off boredom? Um, first time, they will be creative. So, you have to see you work with 30% of gravity. 
there are so many exciting things you can do with it because mm -hmm. you can jump faster, you can run faster, whatever it is. And most of the time they will be in the beginning especially very busy. You have to call their foods and they want to explore, so Mars is huge, a lot of things. When you're bored, just take your space suit on and go out and explore a little bit more. Uh, look at rockets and you have internet all the time. You have a delay on it, but you can get anything you want from the internet. So they can read books, they can get the literature, can music, talk with the relatives with time delay. Mm -hmm. They will figure out a way sooner or later how how make it is really working. And the high time will be when there's only six minutes delay. Uh, longer will be four minutes, but you can even play chess. You just wait forty minutes yeah. until he makes the next move. <laughs> <laughs> so you do have a lot of communication.